We have our collection of apple pie recipes, but it's clear that it's becoming so popular, we need to look a little deeper at our open source process. Let's go a little further. Your collection of recipes is growing quickly as more people are sending you their own recipes to add. You realize you need to clarify things and make this process a little easier for everybody. Someone new finds your collection, but they want to know more about it. They ask you, where did all these recipes come from and how can they send you their own? So, you take a minute and write out a brief description and history of your collection and instructions for what they should do if they have a recipe to add. Maybe you include some basic criteria and guidelines because this is an apple pie collection after all and you don't want recipes for blueberry muffins. Someone else asks you, if I send you one of my apple pie recipes, can I still call it mine? And can I use the recipe to sell pies? Those are good questions, you think. So you take a minute and clarify the rules around ownership and usage of the recipes. By now, you're getting so many new recipes for your collection, you decide to enlist one of your friends to help you review them all. This proves to be a great way to reduce the burden on you and it frees you up to think about other things regarding your collection. You know that some recipes taste better than others, at least to you, and you decide you want to only include the best recipes in your collection. So your friend helps you test each recipe to make sure it is delicious before you accept it in your collection. Sometimes a recipe just needs a little tweak to make it perfect, so you tell the person sending it in and ask them to tweak the recipe and resubmit it. Sometimes the person who submits a change to a new recipe also includes a note that tells you what changed and why they are suggesting the change. You decide this is super helpful information and are really happy because then you don't have to try and figure it out. You then start to notice that more people are adding ideas and suggestions for new recipes and making comments on others' ideas and suggestions. You know that apple pie should only be a source of joy, so you want to make sure everyone treats each other with kindness and respect. After all, you are all apple pie lovers. So you write a document that makes this clear. You don't want anyone wondering if someone is going to make fun of them for eating their apple pie with sharp cheddar cheese instead of ice cream. This list of suggestions and ideas around your collection is getting larger and you're having trouble keeping them all organized. Some things seem like they might be easy to fix, such as your misspelling of cinnamon, which you always seem to have to think really hard about. Other things are a little harder and might take some thought on your part, like adding in photographs for each step in the recipes. You decide to stick sticky notes on each idea to help you sort them and keep them organized. Some of your fellow apple pie lovers want to help you manage your collection and you'd really like that but it's hard for you to know where to tell them to start. There's a lot to be done and you aren't sure what they might want to do. You realize some of the things being suggested are things they can help you with. So maybe you have a special sticky note just for those things. Congratulations, you're building an open source community. Now, let's translate into GitHub lingo. Someone new finds your collection, but they want to know more about it. They ask you, where did all these recipes come from and how can they send you their own? So, you take a minute and write out a brief description and history of your collection and instructions for what they should do if they have a recipe to add. Maybe you include some basic criteria and guidelines because this is an apple pie collection after all, and you don't want recipes for blueberry muffins. This document you create is commonly known as a readme.md file. While it isn't required in every repository, it is very common. This is the first thing people will see when they come to a repository, so it often includes things like the project description and contribution guidelines. If the contribution guidelines are extensive enough, they sometimes are broken out into their own document called contributing.md. 
Someone else asked you, if I send you one of my apple pie recipes, can I still call it mine? And can I use the recipe to sell pies? Those are good questions, you think. So you take a minute and clarify the rules around ownership and usage of the recipes. Many repositories have an open source license attached to them, license.md, that details who owns the information or code in the repository and if there are limitations to how the information or code can be used. You do not need to be a lawyer to assign an open source license to your code, but it is important to choose one and make it clear to any potential contributors or end users. GitHub provides some guidance around picking an open source license to help you find one that aligns with your values and thoughts for the future of your repo. By now, you're getting so many new recipes for your collection, you decide to enlist one of your friends to help you review them all. This proves to be a great way to reduce the burden on you and it frees you up to think about other things regarding your collection. Someone who has the authority to include or merge those new recipes or pull requests is called a maintainer. Typically, this is a person you trust and know very well. You know that some recipes taste better than others, at least to you, and you decide you want to only include the best recipes in your collection. So your friend helps you test each recipe to make sure it is delicious before you accept it in your collection. Sometimes a recipe just needs a little tweak to make it perfect, so you tell the person sending it in and ask them to tweak the recipe and resubmit it. Going through this process of testing and closely reviewing new recipes or pull requests will be called a code review. Code reviews often involve some back and forth conversation between the person who submitted the pull request and the project's maintainers. Sometimes the person who submits a change to a new recipe also includes a note that tells you what changed and why they are suggesting the change. You decide this is super helpful information and are really happy because then you don't have to try and figure it out. This note is called a commit message and is incredibly helpful for maintainers to have context around what you're changing and why. Commit messages are often used in case a maintainer needs to reference a particular change and it makes it easier for everyone to know upfront what the nature of the change is instead of having to dig deep into the code to understand what is going on. You then start to notice that more people are adding ideas and suggestions for new recipes and making comments on others' ideas and suggestions. You know that apple pie should only be a source of joy, so you want to make sure everyone treats each other with kindness and respect. After all, you are all apple pie lovers, so you write a document that makes this clear. You don't want anyone wondering if someone is going to make fun of them for eating their apple pie with sharp cheddar cheese instead of ice cream. Setting expectations for behavior and making sure your community of contributors adheres to them is an important part of the open source process. This documentation is often called codeofconduct.md in a repository and many communities require a contributor to acknowledge and agree to the guidelines before being allowed to contribute. Here, you would also expect to find the contact information of the person or persons you can reach out to if someone in the community is not adhering to the guidelines. This list of suggestions and ideas around your collection is getting larger and you're having trouble keeping them all organized. Some things seem like they might be easy to fix, such as your misspelling of cinnamon, which you always seem to have to think really hard about. Other things are a little harder it might take some thought on your part, like adding in photographs for each step in the recipes. You decide to stick sticky notes on each idea to help you sort them and keep them organized. These are called issue labels and they can be anything you want. Often in code, you will see labels like bug, meaning something is wrong or not working properly, or enhancement, meaning an idea for something new and improved, or a new feature. In the GitHub interface, you can filter the list of issues by their label. 
some of your fellow apple pie lovers want to help you manage your collection and you'd really like that but it's hard for you to know where to tell them to start there's a lot to be done and you aren't sure what they might want to do you realize some of the things being suggested are things they can help you with so maybe you have a special sticky note just for those things there is a particularly helpful issue called good first issue which is a common way to indicate to a new contributor that this is a relatively simple task that can be worked on without a lot of deep project knowledge. This is a great way to build a community of contributors and offload some of the simpler items from the maintainer's list of things to do. A project that has a lot of good first issue labels has usually given a lot of thought about their community and works to lower the barriers for new contributors.